All right. Hi. My name is Mark Walden. I have Walden's Woodworks in Oakland, Washington. I'm going to show you my tricked out router table today. This router table design is from Wood Magazine about 1995. It has a hinge top and it also has a hinge door in the front. The first thing I want to show you is if you look down on the bottom, we have an air cylinder down there. There's another one back over in this corner over here and it's for air brakes. You got all your big rigs that have air brakes? Well, my router table has air brakes. You see now it moves, and now it doesn't. Now it moves, now it doesn't. What I've got is an airline coming in, goes through an air regulator right over here. I got about 45 pounds of air pressure. Comes out of there, goes up into a toggle valve. Out of two hoses, back into the back, to the two air cylinders. You could use any kind of a valve on this, whether it be an electric valve, a toggle valve, it could be a manual valve, push, pull, it doesn't matter. All it has to do is operate a double acting air cylinder. This is really slick and it beats way better than trying to get to the locking levers on the casters or what I used to do was jam a stick in the back of it to keep it from rolling away. But the real goodies are on the inside. Let me open it up here and I'll show you. First thing some of the people might notice is these drawers down here. They were out of a treadle sewing machine that was getting ready for the boneyard. So I managed to salvage those. I don't know the year or the model of the machine, but I think they're really cool. And they work really great for router bits. Perfect size. Let me jack this up here so I can show you the inside and tell you what we've done here. Get a better view. I have a two and a quarter horsepower Triton router, table mounted, nothing fancy, with a motor on it to raise and lower my router. This is about the way it works. You push the button here and it goes down. You got a reverse button and it goes up. You have a variable speed to control how fast it goes and a stop button. You could do this with any plunge router as long as it has a screw adjustment and you need to figure out how to put a motor onto the screw part. On the Triton, what I did was I removed the screw, the knob that was on the end of here. I replaced that with this flexible motor coupler. That goes down into the motor. That's bolted to this aluminum plate to screws in the bottom. And then I have these two brackets. This all has to be secure enough so when you move the router, it goes up and down but it also is secure enough to not to have the motor turn. On the left side, what I did was I removed the handle and I installed the sending unit for the digital readout. I'm going to tell you more about that in a minute. This motor right here is called a stepper motor. If you have a computer printer, you have a stepper motor in it. That's why it can fly around and put the ink where it's supposed to go is because it moves in steps. It's also the same motors that run a CNC machine. It moves the cutter head front and back, left and right, and up and down. Stepper motors work with electromagnets on the inside that turn on and off very fast and cause the shaft to rotate. But these same electromagnets also act as a brake to work as holding power. If you want to buy a stepper motor, it's actually rated in holding power, not turning power. This particular motor right here has 55 ounces of holding power. A trip on the internet and I found out that the CNC routers have anywhere from 400 to 450 ounces of holding power. So that's quite a difference. If you had a CNC machine trying to route a line straight front to back and you didn't have any way to hold that router bit from going side to side, it would be like trying to router it by hand. It's just not going to work. So that is why I have a stepper motor in here. I don't have to reach back and set this lever to lock the railer in place. It stays put during the time that I'm using it. Now I'm going to take this back away for a minute because I need to show you the rest of this. In order to make a stepper motor go around, well, you need this thing over here. This is called the stepper motor driver board. This is a TB6560 single axis driver board. If you have a CNC machine, you need a three axis driver board. You need to tell three separate motors what to do. I just need to tell one motor what to do. So I only need a single axis board. Over here in the tin box on the side, 
is 24 volts of DC power. It runs this driver board, but it also runs my controller box up here on top. This is called a reversible driver motor board. It has on, off, it has up, down, fast, and slow. It also has a digital readout. It's going to tell you how fast the motor is going. You can crank it up now. It's at 518 RPMs. With the Triton router, in order to change the router bits, you need to bring the router all the way up to the top. And once your bit, your nut comes to the top, it locks in automatically. You put your wrench on. Now you can change the bits. You hit the reverse button and you head back down to the basement so you can get some work done. That's the reason that it had to have a speed controller on it. Otherwise, in order to make it get from the here, from there to here, it would take you a very long time. This digital readout box up top of here was going to be a luxury item that was going to come later on. But once I started putting this to actual use, I found out that when I put a motor on it, I didn't know if I went 164, 764. I really had no idea how far I moved it. So I needed to get the digital router that comes in place. So now we're in set and we should be able to just Okay, now we are zeroed out. So if I do this, push my on button, now I'm going back down. So now you'll notice that on top of here it says minus three-eighths of an inch. That means I'm three-eighths of an inch below the top of the table. So now if I hit the forward button, you watch the rod bit come up, and you can watch the digital readout, the minus sign's gone. And now I'm 7 sixteenths above the top of the table. Now, you might think that since I put a motor on this, that I have lost all my accuracy. Well, you would be wrong. The thing about stepper motors is they can move very, very slow. I can move this at 1 64th of an inch at a time. I just moved that 1 64th of an inch up. I just moved it 1 64th of an inch down. I don't need to worry about setting the brake. I don't need to worry about the router going down. I don't need to worry about anything. I know that, that because of my digital readout, that's going to stay exactly where it is, and I'm going to know that it stayed where it is. A place called MLCS has a digital readout that costs about $400, and it does not include the router motor. My whole system here was about $100, and I'm going to break it down for you. The digital readout came from Grizzly Tools. It's uh, $28.50. The controller box here was off of eBay. It was $38. A week and a half later, same control box on eBay was $28. Doesn't it figure every time? The power box right here was $10. This controller board over here was $13. I've also seen that on eBay quite a bit cheaper. If you open it up, the motor was $10. This flexible motor coupler that's a six millimeter on the router part and a quarter inch on the motor part was $7. The aluminum plate was just a piece of scrap and that's about it. Now I have a motorized, extremely accurate router table. Thank you very much.